Welcome, everybody. Um, welcome in particular to our um, distinguished guest, Nadia Calvino. I'll introduce her in more detail in a moment. Um, members of our team, um, uh, visitors, colleagues from the Embassy of Spain here in Dublin, you're welcome. I in particular welcome the Ambassador of Luxembourg who's joined us. Um, but I welcome you all, those of you who are in the room and uh, those of you who are uh, watching online. My name is Alex White. I'm Director General here at the Institute of International European Affairs. As I said, we're thrilled to be joined this afternoon by Nadia Calvino, the President of the European uh, Investment Bank. It's actually Nadia's second visit to the IIEA, though her first visit it's her first visit in person. Um, but she did participate in a virtual event with us. Um, in our previous capacity as first vice president of the government of Spain and minister for the economy in, I think, July 2021. But it's very nice to have you uh, back here and in person uh, this afternoon. And of course, congratulations on all our behalfs uh, on your recent appointment as president of the uh, EIB. Uh, in her address um, today, Nadia will outline her priorities as um, EIB president. She'll also discuss how the EIB and Ireland have been working together to invest in a sustainable future for all. And will outline her vision for how Ireland and the EIB can develop closer cooperation in the coming uh, decade. And I think we're all of us very conscious of the importance, uh, critical importance of the EIB here in Ireland, uh, given that so many of the um, important uh, public projects have um, the close involvement of the EIB. And I think that's only been increasing over the years. Certainly, I was very conscious of it myself when I was in government, uh, the importance of many of the investments that were then um, in place and those that were emerging. And in the critical areas of the energy transition and indeed the digital transition, and in so many area, other areas of the economy and the uh, necessary uh, developments in infrastructure, the European Investment Bank has uh, proven to be an extremely important, uh, has, has an extremely important role here in Ireland as it has, of course, elsewhere. So the normal rules apply. Uh, our guest will speak to us for a, about 20 minutes or so. And then we'll go to a Q&A. So if you have a question, if you're here in the room, the simple expedient of putting your hand up will um, probably ensure that you're asked or invited to ask the question. If you if you don't mind, tell us who you are. If you have a designation, uh, your name and your designation would be great and we'll come to you. If you're watching on Zoom, uh, again, you can submit your question, but uh, um, on Zoom, use the Q&A function that everybody knows about now. And I'll get them on a tablet, which I have on the table there in front of me, and I will come to those questions uh, as well. And you can participate in the event uh, on X and use the handle at IIEA, should you be motivated uh, to do so. The, just to, to remind you that the uh, presentation and the Q&A are both on the record uh, today. And now to formally introduce our guest, Nadia Calvino is a Spanish economist and lawyer uh, with a career spanning over 30 years in public policy, economics and finance. Ms. Calvino served as first vice president of Spain and minister of the economy, trade and enterprise until December 2023. Prior to that role, she held various uh, positions, including second vice president and minister for economy and digitalization. That was in uh, for a period in 2021. She was previously third vice president and minister for the economy and digitalization um, the previous year and minister for economy and business 20, from 2018 to 2020. Additionally, uh, Nadia Calvino chaired the International Monetary and Financial Committee, the IMFC of the International Monetary Fund. That was between 2022 and 2023. So um, a, a, a very, very interesting uh, background and an important position she holds today. And I know we're all very interested to hear what you have to say. So the floor is yours and we look forward to the interaction. Thank you very much, uh, Alex, and uh, thank you very much to all of you for being here and those that are uh, watching us on, on online. And I am really excited to be here. And I'm glad you clarified that the previous time I was online because people have been hearing uh, me for the whole day saying this is my first time in Ireland. So I think that people would be wondering, you know, how comes that this is the second time at the Institute. But it's true that we made many times, uh, we looked for, uh, for the opportunity, many occasions for me to come and it was never possible in person. I was very happy to participate online. 
but it is um, particularly exciting to be in Dublin, to be in Ireland at this point in time. And when I was preparing for this um, exchange, I, I usually like to lift my head and take a broad perspective and then go down to the details, but I'll do it the other way around this time around. So I'm going to start with the EIB and Ireland, then the EIB and Europe, and then the EIB in the world. And since you are an international institute, I think that will set get the ball rolling for the Q&A that, that will take place afterwards. And um, I wanted to start with the EIB in Ireland because obviously I am I am I have had already a quite intense agenda of meetings with the Taoiseach, with the ministers in your government. I've visited one of the projects that we are financing here at Trinity College. I'll be going tomorrow to visit another project uh, uh, of social housing here in Dublin. I'll have interviews and and so far I what I can tell you is that the partnership between the EIB group and Ireland is not only close, as Minister McGrath put it, it is truly special. In no other country do we have these high-level annual meetings with ministers uh, leading core policies for the country from housing, I've mentioned it already, education to transport, the green transition, energy. And we've had a very meaningful, very substantive exchange with them today. Uh, and this is proving to be extremely productive uh, in financing real projects on the ground that are delivering for Irish citizens, businesses, and so and also for Europe's shared priorities. Last year, we invested 1.6 billion euros in Ireland. This was a, a, an all-time record, and these uh, um, and around 80% of these investments were contributing to the green transition, so climate action. Uh, we're talking about uh, projects that are contributing to Ireland's um, energy efficiency and climate action objectives, uh, supporting business innovation, enhancing your world class in uh, education. We are investing and our partners, we have close partnerships with the nine universities in Ireland. Uh, we're also contributing to um, address uh, housing challenges in this country. Let me emphasize, and I said it already today before, this is a shared challenge. This is not exclusive to Ireland. This is a shared challenge in most European countries, and we are uh, helping address it. And we're working very closely with key partners, such as the Strategic Banking, Banking Corporation of Ireland, Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland, the Housing Financing Agency, and all the government departments that are leading these policies. We have a, a strong pipeline of projects, and I was able to see today how aligned our priorities are. Uh, we are working uh, with eight priorities in mind, and they're absolutely aligned with the priorities of the Irish government and our excellent working relationship and our, I have to say, also close personal relationship with Minister McGraw, also with Minister Donahue, I think will uh, certainly allow us to uh, look, with, allows us to look forward with confidence, and I'm sure we will continue to be quite successful in supporting the Irish economy, as has been the case for the past decades. And how does this connect with uh, the EIBS financing arm of the EU? Well, I think that Ireland can actually be a pioneer and an example when we are trying to scale up some of the things we're doing with your country and uh, contribute the, thereby to uh, Europe's policy priorities. We are contributing to make the twin green and digital transitions a European success. We are contributing to closing Europe's investment gap in innovation, new technologies, digitalization. We need to make sure that we make climate cohesion and competitiveness three legs of uh, a, a joint success. Uh, I would bring the word confidence also into this group of C's, you know, that should lead us going forward. And for that, we need to engage very actively with our shareholders. Since I took over the, the at the helm of the European Investment Bank Group, I have been visiting, uh, doing a tour of the European capitals. I'm almost halfway through. And I've been listening carefully uh, to the to the main uh, governments, but also key stakeholders, civil society, 
it's very important, I think, that we tell citizens, we hear you, we are listening to you, and identifying what can be the priorities where the European Investment Bank can have value added. And we have identified eight areas, consolidating our role as the climate bank, accelerating technological innovation and digitalization in Europe, stepping up uh, investment in Europe's security and defense industry, contributing to a modern cohesion policy, developing innovative financing for agriculture and the bioeconomy, the whole uh, cycle, gearing up investment in social infrastructure, and this is health, this is education, this is also housing, focusing our activities outside the EU on impact, and that's supporting Ukraine, our neighborhood, enlargement, and the global gateway strategy for the rest of the world. I'm sure we'll have a chance to come back to this. And then finally, helping deliver a real capital markets union. And these are the eight areas on which I am engaging actively in my uh, different uh, visits. And actually, uh, they are clearly interconnected. And the projects in Ireland are a very good illustration of these eight priorities and how they interact uh, and work together. Take, for example, the retrofitting for houses. That's one of the key projects. It was launched only last week by the Irish government. It, it is, we're talking about climate action and energy efficiency. We're talking about social infrastructure, building the underlying social infrastructure that allows us to continue to make progress. Uh, it is also contributing to the capital markets union if we're able to scale up this model and reach scale when we are uh, retrofitting, renovating the stock of houses and, and public buildings throughout Europe. And so at the end of the day, these eight priorities are not isolated. They are mutually reinforcing and can really allow us to leverage our actions and mobilize public and private investment to the level that is necessary to make these ongoing transitions Europe's success. Um, I, I summarized it earlier today in the press conference uh, in, a, in a much less... Um, um, uh, how would I say, abstract manner in saying uh, at the end of the day and uh, on top of all these three objectives, and that would be the fourth uh, key priority, we are allowing Irish citizens to get their houses, to have warmer houses, cheaper. And that, you know, summarizes what's, in, what's Europe doing for me? What's in for me? And as we uh, are approaching the European elections, I think it becomes more and more important to explain that Europe is actually contributing to address these shared priorities and very top level objectives. But at the same time, we're very much down on earth helping uh, improve the daily lives of European citizens. Um, and let me close these introductory remarks with uh, what's the role of the EIB uh, in, in the world, in today's world the EIB in the world. And uh, in your introductory, uh, in your introduction, you mentioned the EIB group as if everybody knew, and I don't know whether everybody knows know who we are. And uh, this, is, this is the financing arm of the European Union. We are, whenever there is a European policy priority, then the EIB is financing and investing in this policy priority. And throughout the decades, uh, this has uh, allowed the EIB to be one of the largest multilateral development banks in the world with a 60 billion uh, portfolio, very strong portfolio, very balanced in terms of riskier and less risky investments, uh, very solid AAA rating that allows us to offer very good financing conditions, very strong technical advice. This is very much appreciated. Also today with Irish ministers, we were discussing how important our advisory services are, our excellent team and expertise in areas such as infrastructure investments, uh, climate action, and green uh, transition. And that has consolidated our role as the climate bank. But we are also a proud member of the multilateral development bank family. Only a couple of weeks ago, I was in Washington and New York visiting and meeting with the World Bank, uh, the International Monetary Fund, uh, and the rest of uh, multilateral development banks and also the UN family. And I was able to see how the EIB can also play a very catalytic role uh, in today's world. 
what was the headlines I came back with uh, from Washington? Well, the economy is doing better than expected. Geopolitics are worse than expected. That's That would be, in a nutshell, what came out of this meeting. The good news is that there is momentum for a deeper cooperation between the multilateral development banks. And there is an increased awareness that we are part of the glue that keeps the world together. And as the tectonic plates on which the international order uh, since Second World War has been serving us so well and uh, bringing peace for most of the world, is uh, these tectonic plates are shifting and they are leading to clashes in some areas and vacuums and gaps in other areas. The multilateral framework and these institutions can really contribute to uh, to continuing on a positive trend in terms of growth, prosperity, and peace throughout the world. We have agreed to work together with our partners to become more effective and more efficient on the ground and to try to have as much impact as possible. And when I talk about impact, and I would like to close with this idea. I, I was moving from social housing in a borough in, in, in Dublin. Let me now talk about what sort of impactful projects we are contributing to throughout the world. I discussed with Dr. Tedros from the World Health Organization ending polio in the world for good in two years time. This is what we're talking about. With... Um, the Vaccine Alliance, we are working to provide financing to establish vaccine production facilities in Africa. This is a total revolution, a game changer in terms of a resilience of our neighboring continent. I just realized maybe you don't see it as close as I saw it from Spain, but you know, Africa is our neighboring continent. Um, we are, together with UNICEF, we are supporting investments in children's uh, health and education. Uh, together with uh, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the World Bank and others, we are supporting Ukraine right now. Not only the resilience of the country throughout the war, but preparing for the reconstruction. Let's hope that we can start that phase as soon as possible. Well, I would say, you know, this is real impact. And this is the way the European Investment Bank can also contribute to Europe's voice in the world, putting money where our mouth is and contributing to Europe's priorities in building confidence, not only within our borders and our boundaries, but also beyond. Let me leave you with this positive idea and I'm very happy to take your questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.